Beatty. Back in the late 70s, uh, two things came together within a few hours. I attended a uh, Mensa meeting, Sunflower Mensa, uh, where they brought a moon rock and gave a presentation about a moon rock at the meeting. I went to work on a Saturday night and started doing CPR. And I wondered how they did CPR in outer space. And I asked Dr. Daniel Caliendo if he knew and he didn't. Uh, so I wrote to NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Administration. They sent me their procedure that they intended to do when they got the space shuttle working. And it was pretty cumbersome. There were quite a few steps. It involved a harness that uh, between the person that was being performed on and the performer, otherwise they'd shove each other away. So the harness kept the two linked together. And then you had to strap the person uh, who needed CPR into the lockers, slip uh, straps through lockers to cinch him down. And I thought about it and wrote a paper uh, and um, submitted it to the case for Mars, and it was published um, in volume 57, Science and Technology Series, American Astronautical Association, um, let's see, proceeding, I, I gave a, a presentation in Boulder, Colorado, I gave a presentation of this paper, and um, uh, this uh, paper had been around for a few years before uh, we had the conference. The conference, uh, as I said, was in Boulder, and uh, let's see if I can find Should have put post -it notes in here and so forth. Page 181. I quote the uh, story much grave at the beginning. AAS 81-240, Modifications of Conventional Medical Surgical Techniques for Use in Null Gravity, Robert M. Beatty, Jr. That's me. So basically, it's kind of like Heimlich came up with. I don't remember if Heimlich could come up with the Heimlich maneuver yet. But you get behind them and pump their chest. That's how you hold on to them. And uh, if the, you need to... Uh, uh, you know, want to do a, a airway, you just do the bellows effect, which is what they taught in Red Cross prior to the introduction of CPR. So you would, one of the astronaut would get behind them, pump their chest to circulate their blood, locking their legs around them, you grab their elbows and pump their chest, moving air in and out, and then go back and forth until, because somebody else, the other astronauts would be moving as a unit, putting you in the space uh, shuttle or later space station. And I recommended having a mechanical uh, processes just like we do now with the mechanical uh, pumper and uh, airway. So I'm invited to continue to give papers. Oh, I think there was uh, something else in here. Yeah, I co-authored a section with a medical doctor. It's also in there. This is uh, next uh, volume later. Case for Mars. Case for Mars two. Death in space. Robert Beatty. Los Angeles Times interviewed me about this. Uh, this also back in the 80s. Um, 
about what to do if you have people die on the in outer space. Case for Mars three. Strategies for exploration. Carol Stoker, Dr. Carol Stoker, genius. Uh, this is volume 75, AAS series. Point four. Yeah, I gave a presentation, um, but I just had an abstract ready for this volume. Wizards of Mars, Politics and Prospects for the Colonization of Mars. Um, and I've written a book, which I'm not yet ready to publish, Cosmic Commerce, which was based... Uh, it's the same ideas that I had in this, AAS 90-282. Case from R6. Another presentation. Now, this was after I was I became a lawyer um, in the 90s. Discussion of a Mars mission, tort reform, antitrust tax, and insurance act of the USA and United States Convention. That's the important part. I, you know, China wants to go to Mars. They don't have to worry about antitrust laws. People in the USA do, including individual billionaires. I thought we could make some international laws to make this all go better. And we can't. I mean, it's just a matter of being smart enough to do it and persuading people that it's in everyone's best interest. Uh, space manufacturing, what I tend to call cosmic commerce. Um, well, it's all there. I met quite a few people. I don't know if they remember me. Right, The paper right after mine in this volume, Robert Zubrin. He's written quite a few uh, books about going to Mars. Uh, and we had talked then. No reason he'd remember. And um, I'll have a follow-up later.